Hello, and welcome to this introduction to endpoint control video. In this video, you'll see how easy it is to use a FortiGate and FortiCline 5.0 to secure your endpoints. You can use FortiGate and FortiCline 5.0 to protect all the endpoints on your network, including desktops, laptops, tablets, and smartphones. Whether these endpoints are directly connected to your FortiGate, connected to your FortiGate via a router, or remotely connected over VPN or the internet. FortiCline 5.0 enables every device, local or remote, stationary or mobile, to integrate with your FortiGate, so your users and guests can work efficiently anywhere at any time, without compromising the security of your network. In this video, we'll focus on the steps required to set up endpoint control for Windows PCs directly connected to FortiGate. After you've set up endpoint control on the FortiGate, the first time a user with an unregistered endpoint attempts to connect to the internet, a captive portal will be displayed, prompting the user to download and install FortiClient. Once installed, FortiClient will attempt to register with the FortiGate. As part of the registration, FortiClient will download and apply the endpoint security profile as defined on the FortiGate. After successful registration, the Windows PC becomes a compliant endpoint and will now be able to connect to the Internet. Now let's take a closer look at the FortiGate setup. We begin by logging into the FortiGate. In this video, we're using a FortiGate 200B, but the same steps can be applied to any FortiGate model. There are three steps involved. The first one is to configure the interface. Under Network, Click on Interface. Select the interface that the endpoints will be connecting to. In our example, it is a switch interface. Go ahead and edit that interface. On the Edit page, select Forty Client Access, as well as Detect and Identify Devices under Device Management. This will allow us to create different rules based on the type of the endpoint. And that's all we need to change on the interface page, so click OK to save the settings. The next step is to set up the endpoint profile. Under the User and Device menu, click on Device, and then Endpoint Profile to take us to the Edit Endpoint Profile page. You can select to turn on any protection available here, we will turn on AV, Application Firewall, and Web Category Filtering. Notice the option to disable Web Category Filtering when protected by this FortiGate. This allows Web Category Filtering to only be turned on when the endpoint is not connected to our FortiGate. Other available options include Endpoint Vulnerability Scan on Client with a customizable schedule, the ability to upload logs to FortiGate and FortiAnalyzer, as well as the ability to provision client VPN connections. We will create a connection here, a VPN connection to work. This allows our endpoint users to use these default VPN connections. If you want to create more than one VPN connection, you can do so by clicking on the plus button. We'll go ahead and create another connection to the Paris office with its own remote gateway and pre-share key. Once you're all done setting up the endpoint profile, click apply to save the changes. The last step is to create policies and rules for our endpoints. From the policy page, click on Create New. We want to create new firewall policies based on device identity. The incoming interface is our switch interface, which our endpoints are connected to. We'll select all source addresses 
that are connecting to the internet by our WAN interface. Enable NAT should be checked. And we'll create three rules. The first rule we're going to create will be for Windows PCs that are compliant with our endpoint profile. For these Windows PCs, we'll basically allow them to access our services. So we want to choose all destination addresses, the device type as Windows PC. Note you can choose multiple types by clicking on the plus button on the right. Make sure compliant with endpoint profile is checked and set the schedule and service to always and all. The action we want to perform here is to accept because these are compliant Windows PCs. We'll also turn on the web filtering service on the FortiGate for this rule. Once you're done, click OK to save this new rule. The next rule we're going to create will be for Windows PCs that are not compliant with our endpoint profile. So we'll again choose all destination addresses and Windows PC as our device type. But we'll leave compliant with endpoint profile unchecked here. We'll set the schedule to always and service to all, but the action here will be to display the captive portal and we want to enforce for decline compliance. Click OK to save this rule. The last rule we're going to create will be for all other non-compliant endpoints. So we'll select all destination addresses and all devices, leaving the compliant with endpoint profile unchecked. Schedule to always, service to all, and the action you may wish to set to deny captive portal or accept as we have done here. Because these are non-compliant endpoints, you may wish to turn on your security protections. In our case, we'll turn on everything. Click OK to save this new rule. So now we have three rules, one for compliant PCs, one for non-compliant PCs, and one for all other non-compliant endpoints. And that's it. These are all the configurations we need to make on our FortiGate. Now that we've set up our endpoint profiles and policies, let's see what happens when a Windows PC user tries to connect to the internet for the first time. Because this Windows PC is non-compliant, the first time the user tries to access the internet, the captive portal will be displayed. Note the content of this captive portal can be customized. The user will be prompted to download and install FortiClient. After installing and then launching FortiClient, the user will see the default unregistered mode of FortiClient. Meanwhile, FortiClient will attempt to connect with FortiGate in the background. A window will pop up requesting the user to register with FortiGate once the connection has established. Registration with FortiGate begins when the user clicks on Confirm and is complete when you see the bubble at the bottom of the screen indicating configuration update was received from FortiGate. Click on View to go back to the FortiClient window. We notice FortiClient has changed to a registered copy with the username displayed on the top right corner as well as the colors of the protection icons changing to a light blue. Settings are as we provision on the FortiGate with web filtering protected by FortiGate and other protections turned on. We can verify that the VPN connections we set up on the FortiGate are available via the Forti client. Both Paris office and work connections are available and the user can choose to view the details of the connection. Now that the Forti client is registered, the user should be able to connect to the internet. Let's verify that. There. The user can now safely surf the internet knowing they're protected by FortiGate and FortiClient 5.0. This concludes our introduction to endpoint control video. Thank you for watching.